Next from Springfield, we talked to State Representative Fred Crespo about the efforts between Republicans and Democrats to reach a resolution for Governor Rauner's proposed FY 2016 budget. This runs about 15 minutes. Representative Fred Crespo, thanks for joining us on the Illinois Channel. Uh, as we are here at the end of April, what are you hearing about efforts to come to some resolution vis-a-vis, -vis, first of all, let's take the 2016 budget. Well, we're still struggling with 2015. We just passed a supplemental bill not too long ago, which uh, when we met with the governor's staff today, we found out, we've heard before that it is still short. We're still close to three, $400 million short in closing the gap for fiscal year 15. Um, it, it's it's, it's kind of scary to think that we're still talking about 2015 while we only, we only have five weeks left to uh, get a bill together for 2016. I don't think we've really had a serious conversation on 2016 yet. It's based on a lot of assumptions. Uh, one of the assumptions that's a very glaring assumption that I think many of us don't agree with is that the governor feels that he can save $2.2 billion through pension reform. Well, we passed a pension reform bill a couple of years ago, and we haven't cashed in on that yet. We have not included that in our budgets because we knew it has to play its course and go through the Supreme Court. So for us to accept the $2.2 billion savings, uh, it's going to be hard. And that's a, a big number. So as we move forward, and we had a meeting with the staff this morning, and we we're trying to lay the, the groundwork and, as to how we're going to work this process to put a budget together. Uh, that's, I think, one of the things that we're going to have to address. Well, let's. It, it, so the numbers that COGFA has shared with us is that the state, not counting that $2 billion that the governor's office is counting, the state is looking at about a $6 billion deficit for 2016, 2017, and 2018. Right. Uh, in your estimation, can that be done through cuts? Well, it all depends, right? I think if you want to bu uh, balance the budget in one year, uh, you're going to have to cut a lot. I, I think my recommendation would be this, look at a two or three year plan. I think we're going to have to carry some unpaid bills, uh, whether it's $2 billion, $4 billion, that will give us some wiggle room. And I think that's going to be part of the discussion as well. I think that we won't be able, realistically speaking, to close a $6 billion gap in one year. There's going to have to be some wiggle room, whether we carry uh, a liability in unpaid bills, whether there's some other things that we just can't complete this year and complete in 2017. That's the type of discussion I think we need to have. Uh, otherwise, I just don't see how you close the gap of $6 billion in one year. And let me be very clear. The math part of the budget is very easy. We, we can look at the budget on paper and make the numbers balance. Anyone can do that. There's the other aspect that I hope the governor understands, and that is that we have a social responsibility. We have to be sensitive to the needs of people who have needs out there, such as autism, uh, folks that need help to pay their gas bills, uh, mental health, disability services. We can't ignore and say, well, it's tough luck for you. We managed to balance the budget on paper. We need to take that into account, and I'm afraid that the governor has not had really a, a good discussion when it comes to that social responsibility part of the budget. In fact, we uh, talked earlier today with uh, a couple of executives who run nursing home facilities, who are taking care of people who have had strokes, elderly people, people with uh, Alzheimer's, uh, and they were saying they can't they're just getting a $3 million whack out of their budget, which now I think we understand a little bit more because you were saying uh, a lot of people, including myself, had thought that the 2015 budget hole had been fixed, uh, but apparently there's still, what, $300 million out there that needs to be You know, and, and I mentioned this to uh, his budget director, Tim Newding, last week when, we, when the budget overview committee met. We did pass a supplemental bill, and I supported the supplemental bill. I was one of the very few Democrats who did that because I understand that nothing's going to be perfect. You, you know, you don't always get what you want. You get what you can get. And the speaker was very clear on the House floor that mental health was going to be protected. That, to me, was very key, and I supported the supplemental bill. As you can imagine, on Good Friday, as I'm leaving church, I find out, I get a call. Did you realize that the governor made some cuts, and he also cut autism? I was having a very difficult time reconciling that. And again, I go back to the social responsibility. Uh, I told 
his staff, his budget director, that had I known that, I probably would not have voted for a supplemental bill. I also added this, Terry. Last year, we did not get any support from Republicans on any budget bills. Former Governor Quinn introduced two bills. The recommended bill, which the Republicans didn't want because it was based on continuing the income tax increase, and he also introduced a non-recommended budget, which is based on the assumption that the tax increase was going to sunset. I ran the not recommended budget because leadership did ask me to run the not recommended budget. I would hope to get some Republican votes on that budget. Zero votes on the not recommended budget. So they voted no on both budgets. It's not a matter of criticism. It's an observation. And I told the governor's staff and his administration, please look at the supplemental budget. He did get the benefit of some Democratic support on that budget. We're willing to work with the governor and his administration. We're going to, meet to have to meet halfway and we have to make sure we're very clear as to what we can or cannot do. But he does have the benefit, as of today, the 28th of April, that some Democrats want to work with his, his administration. We did not get that benefit in the past as Democrats. Uh, is there, how, how would you describe the, uh, the relationship currently between the, let's say, House Democratic Caucus and the governor's office? Uh, well, we're, we're starting to have meetings now. I, one thing I have to give the governor a lot of credit for, uh, I know when many of his secretaries or directors come before my appropriations committee, one of the first questions we ask them is, you know, give us uh, some background information. What's your background? And he has found some very competent people, so I'm, I'm very encouraged when I hear that. Uh, I think, you know, with five weeks left to come up with a budget, I think now we had a very first meeting today. Uh, we're going to find out next week or two uh, whether that's going to lead to something. Um, everybody knows if we don't reach an agreement by the end of May, we'll probably be here all summer long. Uh, by the way, I haven't told my wife that yet. <laughs> well, and that's happened before under Governor, uh, Governor Bogoyevich back in uh, the summer of 2007. I think the budget wasn't done until like September or so. Right. Uh, on that score, what is anything being discussed within the, uh, what are the odds that you're going to be done by May, the end of May, do you think? As for the viewers, again, you're, you're supposed to normally wrap up by the end of May. And if you don't, then you're going to need a bunch of Republican support. Yeah, well, you know, I remember when I was first elected eight years ago, we had former Governor Rod Gregorovich in office, and he kept calling special session days almost all summer long, all year long. And I think the reason was really for political reasons. If we do go beyond May, uh, hopefully it's not because of that. It's because for some reason we couldn't reach an agreement. But the key thing, and this is why I keep reminding the governor and his staff and his administration, the key numbers are 30 and 60. We need 60 votes to pass a bill out of the House, 30 votes in the Senate. How we get there is going to be the key, whether the Republican and Democrats, whether Democrats only, I don't know, but that 30-60 is going to drive everything. And we just need to find a way to get there. And I think we have to, you know, we represent different districts and we have to be really sensitive to what the needs are in our districts. But you cannot will a budget. And, you know, again, this is an observation. This is what I'm getting so far. It seems like I want to will this thing. It doesn't work that way in government. And last question, I mean, uh, the governor has been pretty adamant that he doesn't want any tax increase, no new revenues, until he can get some reforms. And he says, uh, you know, I'm not going to get those reforms unless I hold people's feet to the fire. Uh, and, and while he hasn't said that, it seems to be, if you read between the lines, he might accept a tax increase uh, after he's gotten some reforms in the way maybe money is handled and spent. What are your uh, thoughts on possibly some revenue enhancement, whether it's uh, by going back to a 5% income tax, or do you see, I guess the essence of the question is, do you see any grand bargain uh, if, if you were the governor, that you, or, or knowing what you know, that, you, that a deal could be reached with the governor, knowing his position at this time, and, and knowing, on the other hand, the social needs uh, that the state, as you have mentioned, needs to be funding? Well, I think one thing has become very clear uh, during the campaign season. You hear every, just about everybody who runs for office, including the governor, talks about cutting waste. And that's how we're going to balance the budget. Well, welcome to Springfield. He's made a lot of cuts. 
Uh, I don't think he calls those cuts waste, but I think he came to the conclusion that there's not that much more waste to cut. We have that social responsibility, and we need to gauge what that is, how much is that going to cost us. And I agree that part of the conversation is going to have to include some revenue enhancement of some sort, whether it takes the form of an income tax uh, increase, whether it takes the form of a sales tax, which he's talked about as well. I don't know what that is. I do agree with him in one point, and that is you have to force that dialogue. And I think he's very good at doing that. By making these cuts, he's bringing people to the table say, we need some reform. Is he going to get all the reforms that he wants? No. And I think that's going to be the big question. What is he willing to accept? I think many of us are willing to work with him and say, we do need some reform. It's not going to happen in one year. Okay, I said last question. Let me ask one more, if I can, just before we close out. So is, the gov is this governor, Governor Rauner, different in style than a Governor Quinn to work with? Is, and if so, uh, how so? Well, for someone like me who came from the private sector, it's nice to have someone in office that understands how business is run. But I, I hope he understands, like I did very quickly, like maybe not even six months into my, my first year, that you can't run state government or government has a business. There might be some business principles that you can apply. There's no doubt about that. But when I was working in the private sector, I was beholden to a board of directors. They spoke with one voice. It was very clear what they wanted. You come to state government, there are many voices that are speaking to you, and, and, and it doesn't work that way. I really, truly would hope that he will look at a long plan rather than, than doing this in one year. I think if we had like a two or three year plan, granted we have to pass a balanced budget, but I think there's some wiggle room where we can just have a two or three year plan. He's in office for four years. So I think we have time to do it right. But yes, to try to balance a budget in one year by making cuts. And I think, like I said before, uh, we've cut more than waste. So there's no more waste to cut. People are getting hurt. Unless I see a line item on the budget for body bags, then maybe I can reconcile that. But I haven't seen that yet. People are getting hurt. All right. Representative Fred Crespo, we appreciate you talking with me. Thank you for your time.